Hello, uh, on a whim, a few people uh, asked me this. They asked me, uh, outside of photography, uh, equipment and stuff, uh, what in my 42 years of life, um, and I have I guess you can call myself a gadget whore. I mean, I, I kind of am. Um, what are my favorite things in life? Uh, well, I mean, specifically as far as gadgets are concerned that uh, I don't travel with or go without or the most useful things that I have that uh, I love the most. And of course love is an inappropriate word, especially a translation to something else. You don't love material possessions. I mean, I'm totally against materialism. As a Platonist, I mean, that is certainly the premise of my existence. Even though I have tons of lenses and a bunch of gear, I mean, I'm, I'm not a materialist. I mean, having them and being uh, addicted to them, obviously, are two different things. That, uh, uh, obviously so. Uh, however, a lot of people don't make the distinction. Anyway, I made a video partly about uh, either a Petzl or like a black, uh, the black diamond uh, headlamp. Just incredibly useful for doing things, working on stuff, shooting at night, um, uh, God, just, just thousands of uses. Um, I have three or four of these. This one is just insanely beat up because I've used it for years. I can't uh, go anywhere or live without a Swiss Army knife. I keep it bedside for everything. Um, definitely probably my number one most useful tool that I've ever had. I think they call this one the Champ. I can't remember. They've got a bunch of different sizes on these, but the uh, most useful tool that I have, the one thing I've owned several of and then I never basically go anywhere with, that's a uh, iPod Shuffle. Uh, they're like $48. Two gigs of uh, MP3 music. I clip it to my shirt. Comes with a little clip. It's the most handy device. most wonderful device, especially for drowning out you know, little brats crying and crap when you're taking a trip on the airplane or uh, just, you know, going through the grocery store. You don't have to listen to some sort of a trash bag talking about, you know, who knows what. Um, I've, I've got endless ones of these. Most useful tool in the world. Um, this is the most powerful, um, smallest uh, handheld LED. I think they got a more powerful one now. It's the P2X Fury Tactical. These are surefire lights. I think I've got 12 or 13 of these different lights. Not of that one, which is rather expensive. Uh, but the E2D LED has a strike face. Um, it's also got two settings, low and high. I mean, I've dropped this thing. I mean, it's been in the ocean, the beach. It, uh, it's just absolutely the most incredible flashlight. And I've, I've always been a flashlight slut. Um, it runs off these little one, two, three batteries. It runs off a pair of those. It's all CNC machined aluminum. Absolutely indestructible uh, beast. Um, SWAT teams, uh, Navy SEALs. Everybody uses Surefire because this is as good as, as good as it gets. This is I've owned since I used to work in a couple of gun stores, and I'm a gunsmith, and I'm also a concealed carry instructor. I've owned or played with every Surefire out there, and uh, I think they got a newer version of this. It's a lot more powerful. I can't recall, but this one's been through the ringer. This is the E2D a Surefire. Um, I've got a bunch of these, rather simple. I'm sure most people see them. They're SIG bottles. They're uh, aluminum bottles made in Switzerland. Uh, just incredible for uh, packing drinks. No, I don't drink alcohol. You know, coffee, whatever. Keep it by the bedside, screw top. Um, just incredibly handy. This is the one liter jobby. For you know, sticking coffee in. Also, too, when you put a drink, a uh, a drink that isn't like soda or whatever, inside these, you stick them in the refrigerator. They'll chill your drink down a lot better because they're heat sinks. Since they're aluminum, they're heat sinks, so it'll chill your chill your drink down faster than uh, any other container, for obvious and logical reasons. Um, iPad. I love. Uh, Laying back when I've got a time or two to actually catch your breath and uh, you know watch something on uh, on Netflix or whatever, I just surf the web, laying in bed, check the mail, the news. Um, I've uh, tried to get this app. It's completely free. It's called Pulse, and there are also a lot of uh, photography channels uh, that you can actually subscribe to all these different feeds. And this is actually the best free app to get. Um, a lot of them are funny, I mean, business, news, whatever, but I've got a lot of uh, photography, blog stuff, you know, the best of photography, popular photography. They update every day, sometimes several times a day. There's Petapixel. 
These are really great. This is the best news feed and the best free application to get for your iPad. It's called Pulse. It's just incredible. If you got an iPad, you don't have Pulse yet, then what's wrong with you? So, here's my uh, favorite gadget whore tool. Um, the next one, well, no particular order, obviously, is the MacBook Air. I used to be number one person in the world for doing tech support on the MacBook Air. You can still find me over on discussions.apple.com. Some of the articles that I've written, I'm still ranked number two on discussion.apple.com for tech support on the MacBook Air. I used to repair compact HP laptops. I can actually say I've owned hundreds of laptops. Most of them are free, ones that I repaired. I built up from dead parts, and being the cynical, crotchety old coot that I am, I don't know if I'm old, I mean, I'm 42, whatever. Um, I've actually never seen anything as impressive in my life, and it just continues to impress me how incredible a MacBook Air is. I don't care if you hate Apple, it doesn't make any difference, I, I just don't give a darn. But uh, I've, I've never, I've owned more laptops than anybody. I mean, that's, may, there might be Bill Gates or somebody out there that's owned more laptops than I have, but my God, I've really owned a lot. Nothing is really as impressive as a MacBook Air. I've talked about these endlessly. These are archival DVDs or Teo Yugens. They're rated for 100 years, 60 years minimum. Obviously, you can't put everything in the world on them, but then knowing that uh, stuff that I've been working on now for 25 years, uh, collecting data, scanning in books and whatnot, um, is safe. You know, because hard drives, the most, I've got tons and tons of hard drives, but the most unreliable thing in the world is a hard drive. No matter how much I love them, you know, optical is the only way to go, and anybody that says otherwise is smoking crack. Because all you have to do is just ask them one question. Name me one place that's safe anywhere where my data that I know will be secure 15, 20 years from now if I lock it up in a vault. And they can't answer the question because there's only one answer and it's optical. Nobody likes burning DVDs, but uh, and I've made a bunch of videos about this in the past. A lot of people don't want me to rehash this. Uh, I'm also a Glock armorer. I own a, a number of Glocks. This is one I actually polished the slide on. It's got the tritium night sights on it. It's a 45 ACP. Yeah, I dropped the uh, mag on the floor, which was, of course, really smart of me. I forgot that one I actually had a hair. There we go. Sample device made in Austria. Um, I actually made a diagram, I think about, uh, it's really smart of me to drop the magazine on the floor. <laughs> People are going to be like, what's wrong with you? You dropped the magazine on the floor. It's not a clip, it's a magazine. Oh, that's a winner. Someone will attack me for that one. He dropped the magazine on the floor. I don't care. Um, anyway, most simple device. This is the only handgun in the world that has no screws, no rivets, no welds, and no roll pins in it. As a gunsmith and a concealed carry instructor and also as a Glock armorer, which doesn't mean much. This is the only hand, any other handgun you need a toolkit to take apart. This, this entire handgun can be taken apart 100% just by the head of this little screwdriver or a uh, or uh, using a, a punch a little bit larger or the same size as this. I mean that's all you need to take the entire firearm completely, completely apart. A absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, I polished the slide I think about nine or ten years ago and of course it's not rusted, it's actually got a tenifer coating which they stopped doing because it's uh, carcinogenic and uh, now they're being made in the USA. Oddly enough I created a diagram back in 2003 I believe and the entire world is using it. All I have to do is go to Google and type in Glock parts or Glock diagram and mine is always the first diagram to come up if you uh, go to Google. I hear that basically every police station and you know tons of police stations use Glocks. <laughs> I can't believe I dropped the magazine on the floor. <laughs> I've had too much caffeine. Every police station across the United States and Europe is using Glocks. They have my diagram that I created hanging on their wall. I even heard, now I'll, ne I'll never confirm this, that there's actually uh, a, a small office of the Secret Service that's in a very key location in Washington, D.C., and I was told that my diagram that I created 
12 years ago is, you know, it makes no sense because this is a billion dollar company. This is a multi-billion dollar company now. You'd think that they'd have a whole team of people that would create a super fancy diagram showing the exploded view of uh, the mechanism of the Glock. You know, you'd think that, you know, and I'm no expert on that, but I, I was like scratching my fanny in my underwear back in 2002 or 2003. And I created this diagram in a day or a day and a half, and I had to update it once to come when someone made a comment on something. But um, it's spread globally now, and now it's the number one diagram by all police stations and special forces. And it's like, well, I created that diagram. I mean, I ask any police officer, they're always packing a Glock. I'll ask them, because they got to clean their Glock. I said, have you ever seen that diagram for your Glock? Yeah, I have to clean my Glock, and uh, we were handed that out at the, the police station. I said, you know, it has, the, it has the, the red and the green. I actually make different colors for the springs. And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I printed out that uh, that diagram of the Glock. And I was like, well, I created that. <laughs> I said, anyway. Oh, that was embarrassing. Uh, the great thing about the magazines, you drop them on the floor since they're polymer, even though they have metal inserts, that uh, doesn't dent the feed lips, under, unlike a, a Sigmag. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Um, my second most, uh, well, at least there's no particular order, a Ruger LCP, great little pocket carry. Uh, six rounds mag, one in the chamber. Um, little pocket carry pistol. Uh, entirely made in the United States, believe it or not. Uh, incredible. I got a couple of these little suckers. I used to sell the heck out of these when I worked at the, uh, the gun store. And a lot of people that uh, took my concealed carry class uh, had a Ruger LCP. Um, last but not least, and not least and none of this is in any particular order, is uh, it's a Spider Co. They make a lot of different stuff. It doesn't necessarily have to be a defensive knife like this. This is called the Police. Um, but it's made in an ancient city where they used to make uh, Japanese... Uh, uh, samurai swords uh, it's in Sakai City, and the reason for that is that there's a river that runs around uh, around Sakai. That uh, I, I, I remember from pronouncing it I know it's not Seki City, but Sakai. At least I'm fairly certain. There's a river that runs around it, which uh, uh, metal forgers need. But also there's uh, iron uh, oxide nuggets uh, in that river, so they get there and oxide nuggets out. And of course, it takes them forever to prepare it. They make Samurai swords, and they needed the water for quenching, and blah 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 blah. But anyway, there's a, a company called the Spider Co. Their little uh, logo is a little tiny spider, but it's made in Japan, and these are the most indestructible, wonderful little suckers on the face of this earth. Um, they make them of uh, various different sizes, make utilitarian ones, but uh, that's the police model. So <laughs> that's my list of favorite of favorite things. And I so uh, gleefully embarrassed myself there by dropping the mag on the floor. <laughs> Whatever, get over it. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. So there's like eight or nine people that asked me to make this video, and uh, I, I guess that's it. Catch you later.